The ozonolysis of alkenes involves the use of ozone to cleave both carbon-carbon bonds, both the sigma and the pi bond of an alkene. The reaction has two steps, treatment with ozone followed by a reductive workup, and the products are carbonyl-containing compounds, namely ketones or aldehydes. In the first step of ozonolysis, ozone adds across the alkene pi bond, and this is described using three mechanistic arrows. The alkene pi bond attacks a terminal oxygen of ozone, and this displaces the oxygen-oxygen pi bond onto the central oxygen of ozone, thereby neutralizing its charge. Finally, the anionic oxygen of ozone attacks the carbon of the alkene that would otherwise have lost a bond. The initial product is known as a malozonide. It, however, is fairly unstable and fragments readily. The fragmentation of the malozonide is also described using three mechanistic arrows. The malozonide contains not just one, but two weak oxygen-oxygen bonds. And that's part of the reason that it fragments so quickly. The carbon-carbon sigma bond of what was once the alkene breaks and forms a carbon-oxygen pi bond. This displaces the central oxygen of the malozonide. And finally, the last oxygen of the malozonide donates a lone pair of electrons to form a pi bond with the carbon that would otherwise have lost a bond. This yields two fragments, a carbonyl compound, either a ketone or an aldehyde, and this unusual doubly charged fragment. These two fragments will quickly recombine. The recombination of these fragments is driven by the fact that the piece bearing two formal charges is relatively unstable. To see the recombination clearly, it is helpful to first flip one of the fragments. And so these two representations of those fragments are identical to one another. We have merely taken the doubly charged species and reversed its orientation on the page. Having reoriented the fragments in this fashion, they are now aligned with electronic complementarity. In other words, the anionic oxygen is now positioned near the partially positive carbonyl carbon. And that allows us to see the attack of the oxygen anion on the carbonyl carbon, which yields a new carbon-oxygen sigma bond in green. The ketone pi bond then attacks the other carbonyl carbon, producing a second new carbon-oxygen sigma bond, this one in light blue. Finally, the last remaining carbon-oxygen pi bond is displaced onto the oxonium ion, thereby neutralizing its charge. This yields the ozonide which is the final product of the first step of ozonolysis. The ozonide can then be subjected to a reductive workup to yield carbonyl-containing products, either ketones or aldehydes or a combination of both, depending on what these R groups represent. Dimethyl sulfide is commonly used for this step and it's sometimes abbreviated as DMS. However, other reagents can also be used. For instance, zinc is also suitable for the reductive workup. Mechanistic arrows are often not shown for the reductive workup. However, to understand the outcome, you can envision the flow of electrons as follows. Dimethyl sulfide attacks one of the oxygens of the weak oxygen-oxygen bond. That bond, in turn, breaks 
and its electrons are used to form a carbon-oxygen pi bond. As a result, the red carbon-oxygen sigma bond also cleaves, and its electrons become the other carbon-oxygen pi bond. Finally, the oxygen that was originally attacked by dimethyl sulfide is cleaved from the rest of the molecule entirely as one more carbon-oxygen sigma bond, the one in dark blue, cleaves, and those electrons are pushed onto oxygen as a lone pair. This results in the formation of two carbonyl-containing products, and these are the principal organic products of the reaction. Note that dimethyl sulfoxide is a byproduct of this transformation, and its two resonance forms are shown here. In this specific example, a symmetrical alkene reactant is used. However, even when the alkene is unsymmetrical, regiochemistry is not an issue in ozonolysis because both alkene carbons are transformed into carbonyl carbons. The reaction begins with the addition of ozone across the alkene pi bond. Recall that this entails three mechanistic arrows. The alkene pi bond attacks a terminal oxygen of ozone, and this displaces an oxygen-oxygen pi bond onto the central oxygen of ozone, thereby neutralizing its charge. Finally, the anionic oxygen of ozone attacks the alkene carbon that would otherwise have lost a bond. This yields the unstable malozonide, which contains two weak oxygen-oxygen bonds. The malozonide fragments via three mechanistic arrows. The carbon-carbon sigma bond of what used to be the alkene breaks, and those electrons form a carbonyl pi bond. This cleaves the weak oxygen-oxygen bond and those electrons are pushed onto one oxygen as a lone pair. Finally, the last oxygen of the malozonide donates a pair of electrons to the carbon that would otherwise have lost a bond. Two fragments result from this malozonide cleavage. However, they will quickly recombine. Recall that the mechanism for the recombination of these fragments will be more clear if we flip one fragment relative to the other so as to align the molecules with complementary electronics. After reorganizing the fragments in this fashion, we can easily appreciate how the anionic oxygen would be attracted to the partially positive carbonyl carbon. And that attack displaces the carbonyl pi bonding electrons, which are used to attack the other carbon that is involved in a double bond to oxygen. Finally, this displaces the orange pi bonding pair of electrons on to the positive oxygen, thereby neutralizing its charge. This affords the ozonide, which is the final product of the first step of ozonolysis. In step two of the reaction, the ozonide is cleaved by treatment with dimethyl sulfide, or a similar reagent. Dimethyl sulfide first attacks one of the oxygens involved in the weak oxygen-oxygen bond. This causes the cleavage of that weak bond, and the electrons are used to form the first carbonyl pi bond. As a result, the red carbon-oxygen sigma bond breaks, and those electrons are used to form the second carbonyl pi bond. Finally, the dark blue carbon-oxygen sigma bond breaks, and those electrons are pushed onto the oxygen that was originally attacked by dimethyl sulfide, 
thereby cleaving it from the ozonide entirely. Notice that when a symmetrical alkene reactant is used, two identical carbonyl containing products are formed. So the product of this reaction is solely cyclohexanone. It is merely drawn here twice so that you can follow the electrons mechanistically. Also, dimethyl sulfoxide is formed as a byproduct, as expected. We saw in the previous example that a symmetrical alkene substrate will yield a single carbonyl-containing product upon ozonolysis. However, when the substrate is unsymmetrical, the products will be two different carbonyl-containing molecules. In this instance, the unsymmetrical alkene substrate undergoes the addition of ozone across the pi bond in the same fashion as we have seen previously. This affords the transient malozonide intermediate, which rapidly fragments so as to give these two pieces, one of which is doubly charged and therefore unstable, resulting in the recombination of these fragments. Again, we will flip one fragment relative to the other to better see the imminent recombination. As the fragments recombine, an ozonide is formed, but this ozonide is unsymmetrical in contrast to the previous example. And during the reductive workup, the unsymmetrical ozonide is degraded into two unique carbonyl-containing products. In this instance, those specific products are cyclohexanone and formaldehyde. Again, dimethyl sulfoxide is a byproduct of the reaction. In summary, ozonolysis is a rather unique transformation in that it cleaves both carbon-carbon bonds of an alkene. Not only is the pi bond cleaved, as we have seen in many other transformations of alkenes, but the sigma bond is cleaved as well. And the products upon reductive workup with dimethyl sulfide or zinc are carbonyl containing substances, namely ketones and or aldehydes. Regio and stereochemistry are not concerns in this reaction because both alkene carbons are converted into carbonyl carbons, which cannot be stereocenters. There are no carbocation intermediates in this transformation, and so carbocation rearrangement is not a concern either. The preceding has been an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, and in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.